Shalom lekulam, and welcome to this lesson on the prayer Anabekoach and the 42 letter name of God. This lesson is going to be the first of three lessons that we're going to have. And uh, in the first lesson, what we're going to do, we're going to concentrate in, in the parts of the Anabekoach what is the Anabekoah and the 42 letter name of God and why this name is inside the Anabekoah and also in other prayers. We're gonna we're going to talk about how these 42 letters also are 42 intelligences uh, or angels and we're going to talk about the history and, uh, and, and, and some of the techniques that were used in the past or are prescribed by the Kabbalists in the past uh, to use the Anabekoah and the 42 letter name of God. In the second lesson, what we're going to do, we're going to go into a practical uh, form of teaching in which we're going to talk about how we can use this name every day. Uh, it's going to be a lesson that most people might find themselves familiar with, with a lot of the Kabbalah information that is out there about the Anabekoah. But the third lesson is going to go more in depth. It's going to be into the little tiny bits of energy of the 42 letter name of God and how we can tap into this energy. So it is important that if you're taking this lesson, that you follow up with the other two lessons because you want to have the whole information of, on how to use this prayer in the proper way and also to tap the energy of the 42 names of God. Now, to start, when you go to the internet you're gonna find that there's a lot of information a lot of things related to the Anabekoah in fact they call it the miracle prayer and they call it the miracle prayer because people believe that this prayer can bring about changes in their lives and uh, and that's kind of truth you know what this prayer does it taps into the deepest part of our subconscious of our mind and then connects us to the spiritual realm in order to bring down the light to the physical realm and this is what we're gonna see but as you can see it's being used in order to uh, make money, you know, making products out of this prayer and things like that. And it's because of the belief that this prayer can protect the person, that this prayer can bring about a change and protection in the life of people. Especially if you go uh, to the names of God, to the 42 letter name of, of God, for each day or for each situation, there's a name of God that can be used. And we're going to see that later. But as you can see, we're going to see pendants, rings, people singing the song. We're going to see uh, shards to scan the, the, the prayer of the Anabekoa. And we're going to see also uh, talisman, you know, for protection and things like that. In here, we're not going to talk about any talisman or anything like that because the prayer itself doesn't need to be uh, imprinted on a piece of paper or a piece of metal or anything like that in order to bring the change. The change comes from within us and the prayer is the key to open those doors within our psyche in order to uh, get the energy that the prayer is trying to show us, you know, in here. So the Anabekoa It is said that it's known as the 40 letter name of God as well, and that it is composed of 42 words written in seven sentences of six words each. Each of the seven sentences correspond to a day of the week 
and to one of the Kabbalistic Sefirot. The letters that make up the Anabek Koach are known as the 42 letter names of God, and this is the letters, the first letters of each word of the Anabek Koach, okay? It is said that the Anabek Koach is hidden or is hiding the first 42 letters of the book of Genesis, beginning with the word Bereshit and ending with the word Wabohu, and we're going to see this. The Anabek Koach is set on Shabbat, holidays, and it is also part of the bedtime Shema. Many have accustomed to sing it by repeating each word seven times during Ma'ariv, which is the prayer uh, at night, and also after lighting the candles on Hanukkah. So, in the research that I have done uh, in order to make this lesson, I have not found any resource that will support the statement of the Anabekoach being a basically related to, like it says here, to the letters of the book of Bereshit, to the beginning, the first 42 letters of the book of Bereshit. Uh, most of the things that you're going to find is going to be allusions to it, but no, nothing like that. There's no uh, they say that it comes from a complex calculation, such as Notaricon and, 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 and other kinds of mathematical uh, calculations that are done by Kabbalists. But there was nothing to support it other than allusions to these 42 letters of the book of Genesis. We're still going to touch that in here because the Sohar tell us that the 42 letter uh, letter name of God was used to create the world, right? So we're going to see that uh, in later in this lesson. So the Anabekoah is an ancient poem believed to be composed in the first century by the great Kabbalist Rabbi Nehunia ben Hakana. And those of you who probably have seen the book of Bahir, the book of Bahir, or the book of the Illumination, is attributed to this rabbi. So, the poem of the Anabekoach is believed to be composed by this uh, Kabbalist as well. But as we're going to see later in this lesson, we're going to see that these 42 letters are also found in other sources, not necessarily in the Anabekoach, but there's also other prayers that use the Anabekoach, the, not the Anabekoach, but the 42 letter name as a guide in order for, for, for that prayer to be recited. The poem portrays the 42 names of God as and consists of seven lines. Every line contains exactly six words. The first letter of each word suggests the 40, 42 letter name that is also encrypted in the first 42 letters of the book of Genesis from Bereshit in the beginning to Vavohu without form and void, as we mentioned before is revealed in the 42 stops of the children of Israel during their 40-year journey from Egypt to the Promised Land, which represents 42 psychological stages to connect with the light. And this is interesting because what we're going to see is that these 42 letters you know, have to do with this uh, uh, stop. But as we can see here, that... I put over here, you know, there were there are many, many kinds of uh, uh, many camps that the Israelites had during the the journey to the desert, and this comes from Numbers thirty three one, where it says these are the marching stages, marching stages of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt by their forces through the hand of Moshe and Aharon, forty two stations from Egypt to Sinai, from Sinai to Kadesh from Kadesh to the gateway to Canaan, opposite to Jericho. So that's um, that's how we're going to see the 42-letter name also being part of this kind of uh, journey that the Israelites had in the desert. Is it is this something that is important? It is important if you're going to do your personal meditation on each of these uh, uh, stops that the children of Israel did during the desert time, right? 
but this is a good meditation for the counting of the Omer as well, right? But like, if you have seen, you know, the counting of the Omer videos, introduction to the counting of the Omer meditations, I mentioned that the counting of the Omer is done during the year, right, for 49 days, but it can be done also through the year. You can do your own count of the Omer or, or, or basically correction of your Midot. You, it doesn't have to be exactly those days, but those days are the most propitious time to do that. This is another way to do that as well, in which you got 49 stages minus uh, 7. That will give you the 42 uh, stops that the children of Israel did. Where are the other 7? The other 7 now are the Mahut. Okay? So we're talking about from Chesed to Yesod inside Serampin without counting Mahut. And we're going to see that later, how that actually goes. This is uh, have to do with the Midot or Sefirot. Now... Rab Yehuda, this is from Kedushin 71a in the Talmud, it says Rab Yehuda said in Rab's name, the divine name derived from 42 letters is transmitted only to one who is pious, meek, middle-aged, free from bad temper, sober, and not insistent in their rights or on the rights. So why the, the warnings, right, or the, or the guidelines in order for these 42 letters to be transmitted? And the reason for this is because as we can see out there, we're going to see a lot of people using these names in a way that is kind of like egoistic. Uh, they're using these names simply because they want to have good fortune in life. And when they mean good fortune, they're talking about making money and all kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with making money. The problem is that you're using something that is supposed to be sacred and using it like if it was magic. And this is not about magic. This is about tapping the forces of spirituality in order to bring the light down. And as we're going to see later, there's something called receiving the upper light. And there's the other part that is called taking advantage of the upper light and using it for egoistic purposes. And this is why this name, uh, it's said in some writings, you know, that it can be dangerous for those that don't know how to use it properly. Because most people use it in order to have better lives. And who doesn't want to have a better life, right? But it has to be in a way that is consistent with the uh, rules of nature. Uh, it has to be in balance with spirituality and nature. Let's put it that way. Okay. Then in Genesis 1 says, By way of beginnings God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void without a D. So those are right there in this uh, area here. These are the 42 first letters of the Bible, the Torah. And these are the letters that are attributed to to the 42 letter name of God. But let's go back to what Rabbi Yehuda said. Uh, it's transmitted only to those who are pious. So the person has to be a person that is spiritual already, that has already this kind of a well-intentioned manner, meek, middle-aged. When he says meek and middle-aged, remember the rule about studying Kabbalah when you're 40? It just means, you know, that you have mature that you have actually uh you still don't have this childish thinking or this kind of uh unrealistic and irresponsible thinking when it comes to using this name free from bad temper you, you gotta have this kind of temper that when you see something that is happening in your life you don't see it as something that is bad you're going to be probably frustrated, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be treating everybody else and yourself as if you were nothing simply because things don't go your way, right? Sober means that a person doesn't need to be abusing any kind of substances or sober also means there's all kinds of addiction, not necessarily addiction to substances, but other kinds of addictions that you are a person that you can control those kind of addictions and, and, and basically have none at all, other than the addiction to cleaving to the Creator. 
and not insistence on their rights, uh, which means is that they're not looking for the use of the knowledge of these these forces or these techniques they're not using these forces and these techniques in a way that is for their own use it's more for the use of the whole humanity and the advance advancement of spirituality okay so now let's continue with uh with the one that we have here that says, you know, by way of beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void. Where do we get this idea of the 42 letters of, of the first 42 letters of Bereshit being attributed to the uh, 42 letter name of God? Well, that comes from different writings, but there's one specifically, the Sefer Hakanah, in which we see the 42 letter name of God. All right, we're going to see it here. The 42 letter names of God will appear. Then those names are going to be seen down here as angels, names of angels. And we're going to see those names later, right? But the attribution to the, to the 42 letters of the Torah, the 42 first letters of the Torah, it's down here below in which we're going to see the names of the 42 name of God on this side and the 42 letters of the book of Bereshit okay so here we have Bereshit Vara Elohim okay so we're gonna see and you know explain one by one and the relationship of this letter with this one that's the closest that we can actually get to an explanation of how these letters have to do with the 42 letters of God, the 42 letters of the name of God, and that's from the Sefer ha ha Hakana, okay? And uh, and that's the only resource that we have that we can say that. There's other resources as well when it comes to the name of the angels, we're going to mention that later. But this is how it will look. So we have the 42 letters of the name of God in the bottom here and the 42 letters of the Torah appear. Okay, and if, if we see here, we're going to see Bereshit para Elohim et HaShamayim ve et HaAretz ve HaAretz HaIta Tohu Vav and doesn't say Vohu, which means, you know, uh, uh, void. And then the rest is not included in the in the Anabekwah because only the first 42 letters. First 42 letters. Until the middle of Pavohu. So this is what we can say, you know, is uh, it, how the letters are related. This is what we saw in the Sefer Hakanah. The same thing that we see here in these columns is what we have uh, here. We go back. Okay, this is what we have here. Imagine that these two columns now, you know, in the horizontal. You can also find in the Sohar Bereshit Aleph items 318, 323. This is, you know, from the uh, Sohar that has the commentary of the Baal Hasulam in it. Bereshit Aleph items 318 to 323. And there you're going to see an explanation of these 42 letters. But to the regular Sohar, the, the former Sohar. Uh, in Sohar, volume 1, 30a says, And the earth was void and without form. This described the original state as it were, until the world was graven with 42 letters, all of which are the ornaments of the holy name. Okay, so this is where we have the allusion of these 42 letters of the name of God being attributed to the 42 first letters of Genesis. The other one is Sohar, volume 2, uh, page 234b. God created the world with this 42-letter name. So this is the allusion, and probably this is where the Kabbalists got the idea to attribute it, and uh, why there's, there's no, uh, actually no, no explanation of how these letters are related to each other other than that. The numerical value 
Uh, these are other, you know, things that to keep in mind. The numerical value of it here is 21. And 21 plus 10 to 21 is going to give you 42. I will be, what I will be is twice that of 42. This refers to the long version of the holy name, which has 42 letters. And whoever knows this name is feared by the creations. This is from Kedushin 71. So you have the name Ehie uh, twice, which equals 21, and 21 plus 21 equals 42. So in this name, Mab, you know, Shem Mab, the name 42, you're going to find the forces of the name Ehie Asher Ehie. Now, there's all the curious, you know, uh, data out there. It says that there are 42 lines of each column of the Torah. Uh, so if you come from the top uh, line to the bottom line, you're going to find 42 lines. Okay. Also, the Tefillin contains the name of God 21 times. The hand, Philactory, Tefillin Sher Yad, and the head, Philactory, Tefillin Sher Rosh, together contain the name of God 42 times. So 21 names of God here and 21 names of God over here equals the 42. So we see that this number is everywhere for a reason, right? Now the Anabekoah has 42 words, right? What we're going to see is that the Behafta that is uh, mentioned after reciting the Shema has also 42 words in it, okay? So that's something that you can do yourself, count the words, and you're gonna see there's 42 words as well. Uh, if it has 42 words, that means that somehow this is connected to the 42 letter name of God. Now, so let's go to something practical, and this is something that comes from Ligute Moharan uh, 180. And it, in here, he's telling us how we can use that information that we just got about the name Ehie, right? And also the number 42. So it says, now it is necessary to mitigate the judgments at the root. The root of judgment is Bina, understanding. As it is written in Proverbs 8, 14, I am Bina, understanding, I have strength. Therefore, through the placing of hands of the money, the judgments are mitigated. So hands in Hebrew is yod, yod uh, or yad. Yad is actually a yod and a dalet. A yod has a value of 10. The dalet has a value of 4, which is 14. Okay. Now, when you multiply that times 3, as we're going to see later, it's going to give you 42. It says here, this is because there are three hands in Bina. Okay. So there is called yad, which is ham times 3 equals 42. There are two hands, the great hand and the strong hand, and the synthesis of the two is the exalted hand. Thus, by virtue of the money judgment coming into the hands, the three hands that are in Bina, the judgments are mitigated at the root, for the root is Bina, in which are the aforementioned three hands. A person must mitigate the judgment in this world of action by means of the three hands that are in each of these three worlds, which are higher than this world of action, namely nearness, creation, and formation. In the judgment of the world of action, when the judgment of the world of action is mitigated by the three hands in formation, it is mitigated by means of the name of 42 Anabekoach, Gedula. This is because 42 equals to 3 times the Yad. So this is what is happening right here. So this has to do with mitigating the judgment that comes from Bina. And you're going to say, but I have learned that Bina is giving, right? But Bina comes from the left side. Bina comes from this side of also duality. What is duality? It's expansion and retraction, right? It expands, but also contracts itself, and it becomes a restriction of the light in order to create everything else below, which are seven days, right? Seven midot, or seven forces that we need to correct later, right? So now we're going to see uh, what's the next step. So here 
what we have is the world of action, right? Now, in the world of creation, this is Asia, right? This is now the world of creation, the world of uh, uh, what is called the world of creation is the world of Bria. The world of creation is mitigated by the name Ehye and the name yod he -Vav, so yod he -Vav, which together are also equal to 42, three times Yad as well. Okay, so remember Ehye was, um, was basically the uh, 21. Then we have the yod he -Vav, and this is going to be 15 plus 6, right? That's 21 as well, so that's 21. You put them together and you're gonna get uh, uh, 42 when when uh, you add them, okay? So then after that, what we're gonna see is this uh, correction over here, this meditation, this other part of the meditation. And higher up in the world nearness, this is, you know, the world of Atsilud, it is mitigated by means of the 42 letters of the name Ma. The name Ma, Shem Ma is the name of Zerampin when we look at the parts of him uh, with the expanded names that we have mentioned in, in, in the intermediate Kabbalah lessons in this channel. The simple spelling, you know, it's called Ma, the simple spelling, the expansion and the expansion of the expansion. Together there are 42 letters, three times, yeah. So we take this name and we start expanding. Expanding means uh, using the writing the word that that says yod, so we write yod, and then vav, vav, dalit, dalit, he, he, aleph, aleph, and then vav again, and then aleph. And when we write it this way, what you're gonna see is that it will give us 42 letters. Okay, so this is how this uh, 42 letters three times yeah right uh, it means so it means that what we're doing is we are in this kind of meditations and using the names and expanding them and adding them and all that what we're doing is we are trying to correct the left and right side putting them together and letting them work together so basically it's like bringing balance uh, to our life and it's all because of the name 42. Uh, but we don't see the name here, right? We just see that the result is 42. So what is the important uh, reason that we have this name called map, right? It's because mem bet, which is 42, equals zerampin. Zerampin is the sephirot that comprise basically Hesed, Geburah, Tifaret, Nesachot, and Yesod. That's Serampin. And Serampin equals these 42 names. Now Ima, which is Bina, that we were talking where it comes, you know, all these uh, judgment that we talked before, is called the 50 gates. So we're going to talk about the 50 gates of Bina, right, when we're talking about Shavuot and, and, and things like that. So then we're going to have in, in what is called Nugva, which is Mahut, the 72 names of God that are also very famous out there. But these things are actually uh, telling us the different kinds of energies and different kinds of connections that we need to have. So Vina is 50, right? Plus 42, which is Zerampin, equals 92. Then 42, which is Zerampin, plus 72, which is the Nukba equals 114. Now, when we add 50, which is Bina, with Mahud, which is 72, equals 122. What is the meaning of this? Why do we need to know these numbers? And it's because this will give us the kind of connections that we're going to have uh, with this vibration, if you want to call them, um, on each of those levels. For example, if you add Bina plus Zerampin, which is Tifaret, equals 92. 92 is a good connection because it's will to be stowed. You know, it's a light coming into a vessel without uh, restricted, but in a way that is not going to break anything. 
and 92 also is the numerical value of Yohevahe Elohecha, which is uh, Yohevahe, uh, your God, okay? And uh, what we're going to see is that it's a good connection. So there's good flow of light in there. But then what we're going to see is Zerampin connecting with Anugva, but there's no connection with Bina. Basically, it's like there's no light going in. Well, that gives us 114, right? 114 equals lack of spirituality. It's like there's death because there's no light. Zerampin doesn't receive light. He cannot give it to Nugva. But that's the thing. When we lack, even though the light's still coming and we're not aware of it, you know, we're working in, a, in an unconscious way, uh, not aware of what's going on in the spiritual realm, we lack spirituality. It's like we're dead. Right, and that's science. Mida, mida also means measurements and brain. You know, mohon uh, or mohim as well. You know, meaning that if we don't see it, we don't believe it, and that's how we live. You know, if we don't see something in the physical realm, we won't believe it. So the spiritual for us means nothing. Right now, let's say if we try then to connect. Ima, the 50 gates, without using Sarampin to Nuhva, that equals 122, which is a bad connection. He's receiving for the sake of receiving. He can break the vessel, and that also leads to what is called reincarnation or Gilgulim, because 122 is the numerical value of Gilgulim. Uh, so basically, that means it's like you're just stealing, you're not calculating. I'm going to receive it for the sake of the Creator, for the sake of other people, and receiving it for the sake of me. It's like you're stealing from heaven. Therefore, you have to correct that. Therefore, the wheel is going to start turning, which is called Gilgul, and reincarnation is going to happen. But let's say if we put all these systems together working in harmony, right? This is like uh, the whole circuit here, even though uh, it's a good connection, it's not complete. But now let's complete that circuit with with, uh, with, with all of the parts working in harmony. So we got B not giving the light, Zerampin, which is 42, receiving and giving, and then Nuhba, which is 72, receiving it. And that equals 164, and that's a good and complete connection. That also is the number, 164, of Amdin, which means pillars, and also of Adhesion, Adhesion, had uh, bakim, like it comes from the bakut, you know, at as adherence. So this is what are we doing? We're actually uh, having the two pillars balance with the middle pillar, right? And then we are adhering our soul to the Creator by having this connection properly. We're we're receiving the upper light in the proper way, and in that way we are acquiring or attaining the Bekut with the Creator. And that's important to know this, and, and that the 42 names of God are supposed to elevate us from Asia to Yesira. And if we work with the right intention, we can even be working at the level of Bria the level of creation okay now something that we need to keep in mind because later after the Anabe Koach, we're going to have a study on the 72 names of god the 42 letters are of the aspect of rush head this aspect is of giving uh, so it's if we were to compare the 42 letter name to the 72 names of god these are of vessels that are more spiritual than this, okay? With this one, we can kind of like work through the year without the judgment that we're going to find in these 72 letter names that, that we're going to talk about why the, the, there's judgment in these names. Even though here, we're going to see there's also judgment. Right, restrictions, but it's a different kind of restriction. The 72 names are of the aspect of the body, which is receiver. We're going to see 
how we're going to track that light down, and how we're going to work with that light with these 72 names when we touch the 72 names of God in our study. So that's something that is coming up as well. Now, in the book of Prophets, specifically in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 2 to 4, he says in there, first of all, they talk about, uh, or he mentions, you know, what is called seraph. Seraph stood in attendance on him. Each of them has six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his leg. And with two, he will fly. All right. So, and then he says, and one will call to the other and say, you know, holy, holy, the Lord of hosts, his presence fill the air, right? Kadosh, Kadosh. Uh, Kadosh Adonai Sebaot, um, Lo Kol Haaretz Kevodon, which we say that, you know, when we do our prayers in the in the service of the synagogue. And what is trying to tell us here is that we have seven sefirot times six wings that are equal 42. And when we're saying we have seven sefirot, is uh, in the tree of life, we're working with the sefirot that are below Bina, that are the seven days of creation. But within those sefirot, we're not using marhut, which is the receiver or egoistic vessel. What we're doing is we're using the less egoistic vessels of surrounding, which is the a vessel that it receives in order to give to Mahut, right? And what we need to think is that when we're using the 42 letter name of God, we are becoming this head, this aspect of giving. And we're going to bring it down to Mahut. And Mahut, we also have another tree of life, right? So that Mahut is, is a tree of life that we're going to work with when we touch uh, the 72 names of God. So this is something that is uh, part of what is called a secret. And remember, secret doesn't mean that it's a secret itself. It just means that it's a level that is higher than the other levels that you study the Torah. And that is a different level of understanding or, or a higher level of understanding that can have more revelations if you study it yourself more than just listening here, but if you meditate on this, you can receive more revelations, and that's a secret behind this. Now, Kabbalists, they take uh, the prophecy of Isaiah, right? and it says, angels in Isaiah prophecy, in two he will cover his face, and in two he will cover his feet, and in two he will fly. So the Kabbalists, they divided this in 42 letter name into that right and they wrote it in this way but it, if you don't know hebrew this, this actually will make no sense to you so that's why you know i did this so in that way you can have an idea what really is happening so what is happening is that in here you're going to have the first name right and this remember these 42 names each of them have six letters and these six letters are going to have certain kind of force, certain kind of light within them, because each letter is a vessel, okay? Now, what the Kabbalists did is uh, for every two letter of these six letters, they then try to explain what Isaiah was trying to say. For example, cover his face, that means that the first two letters are part of the face, right? Uh, cover the feet, that means that the middle two letters of these names are these feet, right? And then he did fly. The last two letters are going to be the ones that represent the wings, right? Or this flying. Also, these uh, names of God that are composed of six letters are seven, right? So they're attributed to seven sefirot, like I mentioned before, on that tree of life, also the seven days, and also they're going to have a nikud or a vowel that we're going to see, okay? So, and that's more, we're going to see this more in depth in the future. So, when they were, when, when they were talking, you know, about angels, why, 
what kind of angels are we talking about? So what we're saying is that these letters themselves not only are the beginning of the words inside the Anabekoah, but they are also the beginning letters of the angels, or the name of these angels, right? And we're going to find these names of the angels, as we saw before in the Sefer Hakanah, also in Likutei Hanorah. And if you have, a, I know probably a little bit of, of Hebrew, you can also find it on, I have it here on the book, Sefer Emek HaMelech, Sefer Emek HaMelech, and uh, you're going to find it that it's in there too. You're going to find those names in there as well. The name, names of those angels. So there's plenty of references for these names to uh, to be known. You know, that the Anabekoach has uh, the letters, or the first letter, each of the words of the Anabekoach has the first letters of each of these uh, angels. So there are 42 angels of the holy name, the Right, and these angels, as we're gonna see in the Sefer Emechamelech, Emechamelech says that these angels are from the order of the Seraphim. Seraphim, okay. And we're gonna talk about that in a, in a more advanced class later, not in this first lesson, because this first lesson is just an introduction to. Uh, to the Anabekoach and the 42 letter name. Okay? Now, as we mentioned before, the Anabekoach has this 42 letter name. But these two letter names, is not, they're not only found in the Anabekoach, right? Like we have here, Anabekoach, Getulat, you know. It's also in other prayers like Al Baruch, Gadol. You know, and they have the same first letters. Basically, they, these two prayers are using the same 42 letter name of God as a, as a guide. One is uh, in Aramaic, the other one is in Hebrew. But it's, as we see here, you know, blessed great El recognizes perfect righteousness, right? El Baruch Gedu Laira Tom Sadakatev. So you can see the first letter of each word is going to be the first letter of the name of God, okay? So here we got an example that the 42 letter name of God is not exclusively found in the Anabekoach. It can be found in other prayers that were written by other Kabbalists. In this case, this is a, a poem, right, containing the 42-letter divine name in an acrostic recorded by Rabbi Isaiah Haroitz in the 15, 1565, he lived in the 1565 to 1630, uh, and it's found in his Shinei Luchot Haberit, okay? There's also another prayer that also uses, you know, the first letter of the uh, of the forty two letter name of the Anabekoah in order to form an, a poem. In this case, you know we have this one, you know, and this one is kind of longer, but it's because it, the first half uses the forty two letter name of God in order to create the poem, and then after that it completes the poem using parts of the Tehillim, parts of of, of the Psalms. So we're going to see here, you know, just verses that, going, that came from Psalms in order to complete the whole, uh, the whole poem. And it's very interesting to see that there are different versions, and yet we know Anabekoach the most, right? And this is how we know it. This is a chart that is the most famous out there. It's being probably made famous by the Kabbalah Center for sure. And it's prescribed in the following way that you just need to scan, scan, and that's it. You don't need to know 
the Hebrew letters, all you need to scan them, and that somehow your soul is going to recognize that these uh, letters are, uh, let's say, uh, vessels of light, which is true, by the way. It's, uh, we are equipped with spiritual technology, if you want to say, that if we scan these letters, what we're going to have is a change in our mindset, uh, a change in our way of thinking. It's like reprogramming ourselves, okay? Reprogramming our brain. But if you know more details about this prayer, it will be more useful for you. If you know that this uh, prayer is something that opens the door because it has a 42 letter name of God, and if you know the meaning of each of these verses and how they are attributed to each of the days of the week and the sefirot, the midot that we need to correct, if we know the power behind each of these uh, names of God, of course we can tap some of the energy that these vessels of energy called letters, you know, have. And what we're going to do is, in our next lesson, we're going to start then going to each of these verses and how each of these verses have to do with they, with a sefirot, with a basically six of the uh, of the name of the 42 letter name of God and what kind of force they have okay then on the third lesson what we're going to do is we're going to go into the names only of the uh, uh, inside the 42 letter name and we're going to talk about how to fill them with the names of God in order to tap the energy in a much more powerful way okay so we're going from level one which we just had we're going to level two in which we're going to learn about it a little more in a more practical way for everyday use and then we're going to go to a very practical and a little more advanced way not for only everyday use but also for special situations use and I hope that you continue with this uh, with with this three part series on the Arabic and the forty two letter name of God. Okay, so until then, I'll see you in the next lesson, and uh, I hope that this first lesson have actually opened a little bit your eyes and that you have learned something new. I'm sure some of you have learned already. You know something new like that the 42-letter name of God is not exclusive of the Anabekoah, but the Anabekoah is considered the prayer of excellence because it is it is uh, uh, basically the author was Ben Hakana, and Ben Hakana is also attributed to be the author of the Sefer Habahir. So because of tradition, this prayer has a little bit more of uh, strength and, and has been more used because of that, because of Ben Hakana. Other than that, the prayer itself is powerful because we have made it powerful because of our, you know, everybody thinking about the same thing, but there are other prayers that have these 42 letter names of God and they can be used as well and they can be as powerful for the person as well. Okay. Um, once again, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can put it in the comments below and or go to www.receivingtheopperlight.com and, and in there you can go to contact and, and send any questions or anything like that or suggestions as well. Okay, until then, I'll see you in the next lesson. Shalom.